I got on the Kill Tony mic. It was a perfect day. First walked up, I was like, I'm not looking to the left because I thought I heard Shane Gillis's voice. It's like a place to murder a woman at and take pictures of it. You should have seen my first apartment, dude. <laughs> Remember, he was like, yeah, man, I think I'm going to get tit. Uh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, why, bro? What if a special Olympian actually breaks the Olympic record uh -huh. in the Special Olympics? Does it count? as a world record. Texas, no weed, no porn, no gambling. I've never heard a state that's pro-life, let me live. One of my favorite things for me is when you did. Oh God. It was like this one open like you did a 9-11 joke and it was a comic that was a veteran and like stood up and yelled at you. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the blind guy? The blind guy. Yeah. That was one of my favorite Adam J memories. Yeah, f that guy. That's when I really, I was like, damn, Adam's hilarious. You're now rocking with the funny truth Because it's better with a laugh The truth is more appealing when it puts you on your ass Keep it real, I will Make it slap with the real I feel like everybody got a cap And I'm finna reveal it through a joke The humor is the way that I provoke It's the only way to get you to promote So here we go We getting serious now It's the truth But you know we gotta give you a smile <laughs> You know we gotta do that now Stick around And we gon' make you laugh out loud Stick around Gonna make you laugh out loud. You're now rocking with the funny truth. Haven't did you sign? Did you guys sign up for the mothership mic? Yeah, uh, Juan got on the mothership mic, and I got on the Kill Tony mic. That's that's good. It was a perfect day. It yeah, was, it was really yeah. good. You got both got something. Yeah, when I signed up for the, you always get on, not always, but the first time you sign up is always the best, mm. like best luck. It's like that at the Helium. Mm. Let's see what this new guy has. Yeah. Because every time, I got on the mothership the very first time, and then the next, like, seven times I signed up. Because you can Sunday and Monday. Yeah. Nothing. Damn. I would love to see you on Kill Tony. You got the same, like, crazy eyes Tony Hinchcliffe has. <laughs> you have, like, the devil in your eyes. He had the same thing. Just I looked over the table and like, God damn it, he's scary. <laughs> really? I don't know what the fuck he's thinking about. You know what, I mean? what, what were your like? What, what were your thoughts as you're like walking up? When uh, I first walked up, I was like, I'm not looking to the left because I thought I heard Shane Gillis's voice, and I was like, I'm not. I don't care. I we'll pretend it isn't him. And I just didn't look at the table and just went straight to the mic and did three jokes in a minute. Didn't even care. We're just gonna tell these jokes. I murdered the minute, and then I was like, all right. And then I looked over, and then I got nervous. Like, oh shit! How'd the uh, how the interview go? The interview went pretty good. We talked about Portland. I was wearing a Mavericks jersey, which was kind of a mistake because they lost mm. horrifically. Oh yeah. So I got yeah. made fun of for my Mavericks jersey sure. and, my, and my LA hat. They said I was confused. I said maybe I'm gay. I'm from Portland. Ooh, that's a banger. Yeah, the Portland stuff was funny. Yeah, it was. It's just crazy because you get to go up there and like try to riff with like mm -hmm. Shane Gillis and Tony. Yeah. Was it. some of the best. To yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a podcast. It is mm -hmm. live podcast. How was the uh, how was the room? Like, obviously it's sold out, but mm -hmm. I've never been up on that big stage. So it was probably like four hundred, five hundred people. It's really? Huge. Yeah. It I, looks like it. It looks like. It's, 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 what is it like the stage? It's like a. It, it almost seems like there's like a barrier. Mm -hmm. well, the I mean, there's a person right here. The audience starts there and goes all the way back. Jesus Christ! My game plan was like, I'm not going to sit here and scan though. I'm not taking shit in. I'm telling these jokes. Yeah. And I'm just going to be like, I'm not going to get overwhelmed by shit. Do they read the ads live on the show? I wasn't at the show. Oh, you, don't right. get, you just that's get pulled right. right, right, right. They Stupid. just bring you to the back. You give them all your shit. You get patted down. Yeah. You just wait. And I went up first and I went right after they have a new regular. And I was just sitting there listening to this dude murder. He was crushing. Was it Casey Rocket? It wasn't Casey Rocket. It was another dude. Hmm. Yeah. He's like this big autistic war veteran. Oh, Drew Mickens? <laughs> I think so. He was very funny. And I was yeah, sitting yeah. behind the curtain listening to him like cause a ruckus. Like it sounded like shit was falling down. And I was mm -hmm. just like, the Jeez. dude that would get guy to me, he was like, oh, it's a rough fall. I was like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's no, he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's an interesting, like I, I met him, uh, the few times I was out there. I was like, I knew he like didn't remember my name within like mm -hmm. five minutes. Mm -hmm. He introduced himself again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's, it's funny because, Kill Tony is such a big popular thing. Uh, like I never watched it. My girlfriend loves it, and so mm -hmm. I started watching it because of her. And then when I go down there, and, and then when she was with with me too, like you see all these people, like oh, I've seen him on this mm -hmm. show. I've seen. I see people put it in their Instagram bio, even when they had a a shitty set. Mm -hmm. They're like Kill Tony hashtag five seven five. <laughs> it becomes a credit. It's kind of a credit. Yeah, people use that as as a credit. I've seen uh, a comedian from here, Celia. Mm -hmm. uh, she moved out there, but she. Uh, yeah, she. I don't know if you saw that episode, mm -hmm. Roseanne. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was like a huge viral clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's been getting consistent work. We saw since. her a lot. Of, she's very busy. She's doing everything. Yeah, out there. so maybe that'll be your fate. You know. Yeah, I'm excited. It's good, dude. You took a chance. Finally, 
You, Cause you didn't really have a lot booked, did you? Leaving? You just um, we had probably three shows and then on the way we ended up booking. Like we ended up kind of securing venues along the way. Like we have a mic and speaker and we would just walk into venues and say, can we do a show for whoever's here right now? You we really? Did, yeah, we wow. did that three times. and We did it four times, worked three times. We did like three <laughs> hours at a weed store. We went to a random bar. Did it there? It was incredible how well it was working. Just guerrilla marketing. Did anybody exactly anybody guerrilla. anybody give you tips or anything? Uh uh-uh. no no nobody <laughs> told us shit. We just went and did our own thing. I think that was the beauty of what we did. Yeah yeah. We would just do. We have a wireless mic. Then we would just wheel like we went to San Diego. We just did comedy on the streets. I was just trying really? to roast people. Really. I was roasting people. Juan was spreading love. Milo was telling one liners, and we just wheeled our way through downtown San Diego. That's awesome. Yeah, That's no, man, we, if we can't find comedy, we made comedy. We ended up doing comedy in front of the Laugh Factory in San Diego. I think I think coming from Portland will turn you into that. Yeah, psychos. <laughs> I don't know. We're basically <laughs> crackheads yelling at people. Just well, any, yeah. any by any means necessary. Yeah, I'm like a clever crackhead. <laughs> it's fun. Well, you're yeah you you're born and raised in Portland too, uh-huh. so you've you've seen the whole development of it. Mm-hmm. Well, you and you where you grew up too is always kind of like that, anyways. Mm-hmm. No one has good things to say about Franklin. No, it feels good to leave. I think I have like that hometown. I've been, I'm 25. I've been there my whole life. It's like, it feels like it's just time to go hit the road and just go places. Oh, dude, for sure, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, even just leaving there was so liberating. How old were you when you moved? Uh, 20. This was 2021. So what? Uh-huh. I, was, I was 27. And you had been there the whole time at that point? Mm, no, I lived in Canada. Oh, okay. I, like, I tried to shit for basketball, but. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing over a year, hmm. but it's good to get out. Phoenix, I feel like you flourished in Phoenix. Uh, we just gave you a chance to, cause mm-hmm. like, uh, how many clubs do we have here? Like seven. So we have Star Crazy, yeah. HOC, Ten of Live, Mic Drop now, and then just the various bar shows. The Tempe Improv, Stand oh, Up Tempe Live, Improv. Desert mm-hmm. Ridge Improv. JP's mic drop, stir crazy, mm-hmm. house of comedy. So you have seven, and seven, then, and then, and then there's uh, one two hours away in Tucson. That's mm-hmm. probably my favorite oh, club ever. Great. We were just there. Yeah. It's an amazing club, dude. Uh, it's one of those clubs that sells out. Doesn't matter who the headliner is. It's mm-hmm. just what the fuck are you gonna do in Tucson? It like sells out. That's amazing. It's probably yeah, and seats probably like two hundred. That's the place I've seen people consistently tip to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can sell. You can move a lot of merch at Laughs. Mm-hmm. What's your merch? What are you, what are you selling as merch? I just had stickers. And I said it was donation, and then like, mm-hmm. some, but some people give me like twenty bucks. What's the sticker? Is it just like your evil it was just eyes? A, it's just a Q code, QR code. <laughs> your evil eyes. <laughs> <laughs> just your piercing cap villain eyes. <laughs> Colored eyes are always the most evil. Yeah, they are. Right. It's just untrustworthy. He eyes. looks like he knows the nuclear launch codes. <laughs> it's the, mu- the mustache doesn't help either. No, it does. I got a similar mustache though. <laughs> so yeah, colored eyes are evil, but you can't mm-hmm. say colored people are evil. No, <laughs> there's, a, there's a big difference. <laughs> Man, imagine that. I don't know. And who, who are you traveling with? Who's, who do you got here? I got Juan Denmark and Milo Loza. These are two of my best comedy friends. I wouldn't have did this with anyone else. They're That's dope. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I haven't met you, but you. Pro- How long have you been doing comedy, Milo? Uh, about when he left Portland, two and a half years. Two okay, and half, two and a half years. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that's why I didn't meet. But I think you, the Juan and Lucas, were like two of the very few people that I actually like approached. I was like, "What's up, bro?" Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, vibes were off. Yeah, in a lot of places. <laughs> I did a show there. Uh, you remember when I came back for the contest? Uh huh. I do. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> that was amazing. It was very funny. Um, but I did. Uh, I did uh, that show. The, is it the Good Foot or one that Hewitt does? Yeah, yeah. Laugh Basement. Yeah. Crushing. I know you crushed that shit. I heard about that. It's like people were confused. They're like, oh, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> what you think this was? He's not, he's not just drunk. Uh huh. But there were like there were definitely still like the Portland lesbian type of women just fucking folding their arms for the yeah. first ten minutes I'm up there. And yeah. Finally, like okay, that's funny. Yeah. I shifted my material. I was like, okay, we won't go as offensive. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll do a little bit, do a little bit lighter. <laughs> yeah, I was in your second round. I remember that shit made me nervous. I was fine. The shit that had, had nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. And I remember, like, I saw all the most angry Portland comics in the back with their arms crossed. And like, they're all here to just like bomb his voting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, just collectively it. shaking their head. That should stress me out. I didn't even want to do it anymore. I, I was having fun. <laughs> oh, they took the fun out of it. Between them, the 
people who probably brought their people and then all the people that came for me, that, that show was sold out. It was an amazing show. They, weren't they turning your parents away? Yeah. Or, like trying to? Yeah, they turned my dad away. My dad is such a dick. He got his way in anyway. Yeah. He's pushed that gut through the door. Yeah. You can't stop him. That's, yeah. This was a good, I mean, what, for a, what was it, on a Tuesday night or something? Uh-huh. Tuesday night is the worst night for anything, mm-hmm. especially comedy. So to have a sold out thing for a local event was yeah. really un- great. You didn't sign up again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. No. I think the, I think the, the jig is up at They're this point. They're on to you, yeah. No, but I mean, technically, still an Oregon resident. Wasn't that bad? I feel like it was allowed. Yeah, I mean, technically. Yeah, technically. You know, I've never changed my address. Uh-uh. And then uh, if you look at it, man, the years I've spent living there have to count for something. Mm-hmm. Versus all the people that were saying, I'm not from there. When did you move here? Yeah. yeah, everybody's a transplant. Yeah, you were born in Gresham. Yeah, and well, and the other thing is they also suck at comedy. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're mad. <laughs> yeah, like that just, Facebook group was going crazy. Oh, that was so good. Do you guys? Did you? Are you part of that Facebook group? No, but you, show, so you sent me screenshots. Oh are you still God. a part of it? I would never was. Damn. Um, people just sent me screenshots, and I was like, "This is amazing." And then I just used mm-hmm. it. And people were like, dude, I got to come to the next so show. I know. You used this promo. Yeah. That was clever. Perfect. Oh, it's so dramatic. I know comics are a part of that group all over the country and just watch it for the drama. That's what um, we were oh, doing Hector. laughs. The, the headliner. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The headliner, Ben Roy from Denver. He's uh-huh. like, yeah, uh, I just follow the Seattle and Portland comedy groups just for the, he's like, I, those are the two scenes that uh, just, uh, with, I can't cannibalize themselves. It's madly entertaining. It's really good. It's like reality TV. I hate how much I love it. At some point, there was one point in the scene where I was just refreshing every day and there was something new and exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, because, man, as a whole, comics, there's a difference between a comedian and an open micer. Uh-huh. The open micer, everybody has problems, but the open micers have a lot of problems and then they're not mm-hmm. good at comedy. No. <laughs> so, no. they're like, they're so invested in whatever it is that they're invested in. And And that's what I'm finding, like leaving and being on the road, all the local drama of all the scenes Mm -hmm. you pass by has nothing to do with you. I'm here to kill my set and leave. Pretty much. I'm leaving tonight. Right. And then, yeah, when you stay in one place, the local scene can have an impact on you getting booked Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and the politics. And who gives a fuck, dude? No, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Usually women don't like me. Um, What? Yeah, (laughs) crazy. So your villain, villainous beard? One of my favorite insults, someone told me, I said I look like I'd tie a damsel to the TriMet tracks. Hmm. That's pretty funny. That was one of the best things I've ever heard. That's amazing. Like, God damn it. <laughs> 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 and you got the same beard, so I think it would apply to you. I get, uh... Don't I get, never stop me. I get Waluigi. Yeah. You look like you write jokes like this. Like, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> up for line paper. Like, <laughs> this is going to really upset them. Man. Yeah. Like, hey, you got a clown horn, too. That's dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you got everything. Clown horns and zen. There we go. You know who told me to get that was uh, was Autumn. He's like, dude, dude you, 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 you should have a clown horn. Uh-huh. And I was like. I think we just saw Autumn. He's in Austin right now. He's probably the one who told you about that. She's creaking. in Austin. He, I don't know. No, they, no he, was, he was trying to get. I remember he was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to get tits. Uh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, why, bro? He lives the bit. I've never met anyone like that. He'll get tits in a Trump hat just to confuse everybody. Yeah, he's, well, yeah, he told me he started out in Portland dressing up as a trans black woman. Uh-huh. He was crushing, <laughs> saying whatever he wanted to, and then he went to his sets as himself. And guys, he got like banned from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're like absolutely not. No, he's a walking <laughs> joke. It's crazy. He, really, oh, dude. he lives uh, comedy. Dude, I lived. I stayed with him for like ten days when I was in Austin. Uh huh. Fucking. <laughs> what do you mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> that must be a wild stay. Actually. Man, ten days is way too long. <laughs> that is a long time. <laughs> oh yeah. You leave a little piece of your sanity with him. I feel like. <laughs> he's a fun guy. I love him. No, no, he's great. Yeah, but just <laughs> legally on paper, he is retarded. Yeah. That's so, funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hella funny. It's perfect. But he's also like a he's also like an avid chess player, and he's like actually really highly ranked. I bet he's good. But like, hmm. you know what I was thinking is like, <laughs> uh-huh. what if a special Olympian actually breaks the Olympic record uh-huh. in the Special Olympics? Does it count as a world record? I feel like it's its own record. 
Is it? Wait, if he breaks like the actual the record. The actual record. Yeah, like if some dude um, just beat, runs faster um, than Usain Bull, he does a tell of funny doing it. Maybe not though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> they pay attention to detail. I mean, some of, yeah, like, I, uh, there's a comedian telling me a story about how in high school they were like, because uh, I, I asked him the same question, and he was like, well, when I was in high school, uh-huh. uh, they were like, hey, do you want to help out the Special Olympics? And him and his buddy were like, okay, sure. And they, uh, they ended up doing like the, I think the four by 100 or the, I don't know, mm-hmm. a relay race, and they made them run it too. Uh-huh. And he's like, bro. When those dudes took off, mm. like like they were smoking everybody, like mm. faster than everybody else, mm. and uh, yeah, and he said like they had a, like they took a picture at the end, of, like the in first place, and then uh-huh. it was like all over the newspapers and stuff. He, and, like he's like girls would be like, I didn't know you were. He's like, no, 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 I was <laughs> trying to do something good. I feel like when they win the record, it's the same as anyone else winning a record. They just give harder hugs afterwards. Mm. They, just, they just really squeeze people after their victory. You're saying the record's special. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Special, special place in our hearts. Always. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. Like, why wouldn't they just be in the regular Olympics then uh-huh. at that point? Imagine think, losing to a special Olympian. Have you has, have you ever played basketball against the special ed teams? No, but I... You look like you'd love to do that. I played baseball against a girl when I was younger, and she, uh-huh. str- she struck me out like three times in that game. Uh-huh. So, again, I was so mad. She yeah. struck her whole team out though. Like she was pitching gas. Some of them were cold. I remember when I, I wrestled in the, like the second grade, and my first match was against a girl, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I was supposed to fight her or not. So I just kind of stood there, and she eventually took me down and pinned me. Mm-hmm. And I had to drive. My dad drove me home while I cried. Yeah. And now still had scare me. Still had a boner. Yeah, I was fully. <laughs> that was my first direction. I almost came, but I peed instead. Dude, it was a hard day. Fucking. Uh, I bet it was. Yeah. It was now, never the same. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Girls mature faster. Like, I remember mm. girls being taller than me. Even though I was taller than most people, there were still girls that were taller than me when I was younger. My sister used to beat me up till, like, a certain age mm-hmm. just because they're fully developed. Do you have older sisters? I just have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Older sisters are evil, usually. Mm. Yeah. You know, love my sister, but she beat the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? I might have to punch her in her pregnant belly. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only way to get revenge. That's uh, yeah, it's pro-choice. Yeah, it is. Yep, it is. We're in Portland. Yeah, yeah, I'm helping. <laughs> so, are abortions illegal now nationwide, or is that still in like Texas? A, in Texas, they are. In Texas, what, Pornhub is illegal. Pornhub is illegal. Did you try? To, did you check it? I didn't check. That's oh. tough, dude. Oh, yeah. Milo, did you check? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah <bro. laughs> what, what did it say? It just you just couldn't go there. Yeah, yeah dude. For. For, you have to put in your ID. I hate that that these what? I hate that these uh these places oh, that are screenshot of. Whoa. Okay. It says, Dear user <laughs> As you may know, your elected officials in Texas are requiring us to verify your age before allowing you to access our website. Wait, you just have to verify your age? Yeah. Oh. That's crazy. What? I think other states are like I think I think Arizona's like that. That's wild. That's, that's a lie. I know Arizona's it's like, like a that. whole statement. Hmm. Yeah, Arizona's like that. Can you just use a different website? There's a lot of websites. Well, you just have to agree to being 18. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Well, yeah, I mean, but that seems a little much. <laughs> What's Does your it? take? You think all children should have access? I mean, I think we should all have access. I mean, I just think we grew up in a golden era where we had it yeah. when we were under 18. I don't think know? children should have access. Just like, just like our parents, <laughs> like most of most of our parents like could drink at age 18. But you've seen I some think. fucking reels that are just like fucking out of control. You do. Yeah, you see where just like like it's just like some girl like pretending to get fucked, but not like really. Or will be a, yeah, I never see those. Juan showed me this one where it's like a, the girl will have a baby doll and she'll have her titty out and she can pretend I've she's heard of that. And uh, as Susie told me about it, it popped up on my phone. And I was like, this is disgusting. I've seen I've seen crackheads do that out here, but like it's a fake baby and they're asking for change, like trying to make it look like it's a real baby. Uh, not working. Not she's not doing a good job at it, but no. We'll still look. <laughs> we'll still be like, oh my god. Yeah, it wasn't a fetish. It was uh, like a maybe this will work. Uh huh. It does. It works really well, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's just shock value. It is. Yeah. Oh, you talking about for porn? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Holding a baby mm-hmm. to the tit. That's I a mean, fake baby. either way, how you do it, it's just shock value. Yeah. No matter what. The algorithm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, my porn and my my algorithm is separate. Mm-hmm. 
it's a good thing they don't like track over if they tracked over your cookies from the porn websites too, mm -hmm. it'd be a game over mm. my explore page is like all dog shit and like villainous plans and uh, how to poison the water well <laughs> it's, pr it's pretty pg how to block the sun <laughs> how to blow up the moon <laughs> just random plots <laughs> So how to hire henchmen. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. I like him a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he grows on you. That's what all my exes used yeah. to say. But, yeah, so uh, taxes, no weed, no porn, no gambling. I did a bit about that. Like, on stage, uh -huh. I was like, for a state that's pro-life, let me live. Mm -hmm. You know? That's it. That was funny there. I feel like you kind of want to write more when you're on the road. I feel like we ended up, mm. all of us were writing a lot of jokes, is being around each other and being in different scenes. Well, yeah, and you can do stuff that's local to there, too. And that yeah. local stuff always works. It just only works locally. Yeah. So yeah. When you see the same shit over again, though, it's like, okay, I've already kind of seen it. I get it. You're kind of yeah. numb to it. But you go to, like, Texas, and you're like, oh, these people are fucking weird. They are. But then you, but people that go to Portland are like, oh, this place is fucking weird. Yeah. But you're so numb to it that you, yeah. you're used to it. You can't really see the, the idiosyncrasies of it. Yeah, it's just, everything's different but the same. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, it's like all comedy. Comedy is the same everywhere I, I go sometimes where mm -hmm. it's like. It's still a shitty open mic. There's some shows. There's some people that are the big dogs. Like it's the same structure everywhere you go. Yeah, right? yeah. That's why. Yeah. It's but it's, it's weird who the, the different places you go, who they hoist up as their. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Here's your messiah. Yeah. People were chosen. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Fucking yeah. Portland, you got to be a beta male if you're white. Mm -hmm. uh, gay or trans if like, if you if you're white, you got to do something. You got to have a disability. Mm -hmm. Got to. You can't be just fucking a normal person. That's hilarious. <laughs> A normal person like you. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fucking psycho. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, though. You're dumb. Yeah, he's not a normal person, but on the outside, he looks like it. I feel like that like mm -hmm. brings him down. No, like, I love he, Adam. I love the way <laughs> he thinks about comedy. He's always thinking about comedy. He's always thinking about it. He's always yeah. running a bit. I remember sometimes he'll call me. He'll be like, dude. I'm like, is this a bit or is this like a real thing? Mm -hmm. Like, I always preface it that way. And he'll just be like, he'll just keep talking. Yeah, so then, like, you got to warm up his five minutes normal conversation. And then, <laughs> that's where you, you got to get him ready for the joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just kind of just, it's all about masking it. Yeah. Everybody's an open mic. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I don't even look at it that way, though. I just have built the habit now. Like, oh, that was mm -hmm. funny. I'll write that down. That's good shit, though. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, because that's, that's where all the material comes from. Mm -hmm. How still, much time do you have? How, many, how much material do you think you've made? Oh, fuck, dude. I've never put <laughs> everything all together. I've done an hour before, mm -hmm. but I've never put everything together. Was it a smooth hour? How'd it go? Um, I only walked five people. Ah, um, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's not bad. No. Well, the dude running it was like, I was the headliner, but the dude running it was like, oh, fuck, someone didn't show up and we're supposed to run this till nine. Like, mm -hmm. can you just... And so I just went up and did. And I think I went like five minutes past nine o'clock. And mm -hmm. so I think a couple of people left from that. But there was definitely a couple that was like, the city I was doing it is in Prescott. It's like, mm -hmm. what is that? Is that Northern Arizona? Yeah, it's Northern Arizona. Yeah. So it's actually a lot like Portland. Mm -hmm. I got, like, it was like pouring down rain up there and shit. I was like, I know a heroin city when I see one. But uh, they, uh, it, was, it was like all these like older white mm -hmm. people, very conservative, some dropping jokes about Jesus and like the military and stuff. And mm -hmm. just like this husband and wife just got up and left. Mm -hmm. That's and, funny. And I just made it funnier. One of my favorite things for me is when you did, oh God, it was like this one open mic, you did a 9-11 joke and there was a comic that was a veteran and like stood up and yelled at you. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the blind guy? The blind guy. Yeah. That was one of my favorite Adam J memories. Yeah, fuck that guy. That's when I really, I was like, damn. <laughs> Adam's hilarious. He just <laughs> stood there looking at him like, let me finish the joke. The end's funny, I swear. I think he said something like that. Like, just get that to is the a end. good joke. Too. It is. It was the bullet one. Yeah, the bullet one's really good. He yeah. even let him get to the end. <laughs> like, help, it, helped, a it helped me uh, make that joke better, though, uh, for yeah. sure. Because um, it's, it's always really tense when you tell that. I, I, like, I get nervous when you do that joke because it, it, you can feel the tension in the room, mm -hmm. and it's like it teeters the line. You've definitely cleaned it up since like you first told it to me. But mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what I usually will close on if I'm doing a big set. Um, it takes like a minute and a half to do two minutes sometimes, but... Mm -hmm. I know now exactly where it's going to be like, oh, and then pick back up, mm -hmm. and then, oh, and then, yeah, so, it's, uh, yeah, certain jokes you don't, it's it's hard to have as much, like, freedom or, like, leeway with, because you're like, if I fuck this up, it's not going to be a good look, mm -hmm. hopefully no one, hopefully no one's filming, mm -hmm. you know, type of thing, and then, uh, so getting them right, I think another thing to learn, too, is, like, saying it without saying it, too, mm. like, uh, 
I never say 9-11 in that joke. Mm -hmm. The so implication you, makes it funnier. Cor it's right, the correct. Implications. Right, and I never said it. You're the one who's thinking it. So, yeah. You know, that's I could on, be talking about a different tragedy. That's on you, yeah. Planes fly into uh, skyscrapers all the time. Yeah, completely different thing. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's clever. Somebody yelled at you? You talking about in Portland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's this, there's this blind guy, um, and he was just like, "Stop, stop!" Once once you said nine eleven, once you have these trigger words, uh, was he looking in the right direction? <laughs> he did. So there's a controversy. He may not be blind, but nine eleven activated him like the Winter Soldier. He was like a under the rage. And it was crazy. And I think that same night, bro, he was like he was like hammered and like knocked a speaker on off off the counter or something, dude. Yeah, he was just going towards the sound. Yeah. I'm blind, I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> he found you pretty easy, though. Yeah. He, yeah. he echolocated your ass. He looks like the guy uh, is in the Adam Sandler movie where they throw a tennis ball at him in court. Like, I don't think he's blind. <laughs> <laughs> he's whipping at him. <laughs> he'd probably catch it. I know he'd catch it. Yeah. It's like Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder had hot wives. Yeah. Why are your wives attractive, Stevie? He knew. Yeah. Somebody said they... Uh, what was the story? Somebody said they saw him driving. <laughs> no, I've never heard that. You've never heard that one? No. Have you heard that one? Oh, my God. Somebody said Stevie like, pulled off on him. He was like, hey, what's up? And just pulled out. That's funny. No wonder. Yeah. And there then like go. somebody was in it. I think Shaq said he was in the elevator. And he, he's like, hey, what's up, Shaq? And he's like, how did you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't say anything. He just like hopped in. He just walked in the elevator. He's like, what's up, Shaq? I was like, what? We never want to believe the blind. You should never believe the blind. Yeah. And then I did see one of him, like, stopping a microphone from hitting him. Mm hmm Whereas, like, sliding down, he was like... Well, yeah, but, I mean, Daredevil had, you know... Yeah, you go Daredevil. He probably just had great mm -hmm. instincts. Yeah, he could smell it coming. He could feel shit. I like how Daredevil was blind, and then his superpower was, like, just seeing. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, 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 heat, like, <laughs> night vision. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm blind, but my superpower, I, see, I can yeah, see imagine, much better. Imagine pitching that, dude. He's blind, but his superpower is he can actually see what no one else can. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> it's genius. And they're like, oh, yeah, I love it. Damn. I need, to, <laughs> I need to do cocaine and write more. <laughs> it's brilliant. What's your favorite drug to write jokes with? Oh, weed. I knew, I knew. Weed for sure. Okay. Um, but I, the writing process is... Uh, creative and then comes back to all right what did i write here mm -hmm. we'll sift through all the bullshit and then like yeah mm -hmm. fucking energy drink or adderall or both mm -hmm. zen for sure mm -hmm. um yeah to like focus and polish it up yeah mm -hmm. that's a yeah it's a dude like weed is great for if you don't need to focus mm -hmm. that's where my mind can really just think of this abstract yeah, stuff just write bullshit down mm -hmm. then go through it sober or something yeah, and I I speak when I write. I use like a transcribing app, and it just like, mm -hmm. ch -ch 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 -ch. and so I can just like comb through it and be like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay. That's a good premise. And I think the the way you write kind of changes as you get uh, more developed, I guess, because mm -hmm. like now it's like I should just be adding on to these bits that I already have that are working really well, and just add like a couple more things into it and make it better rather than trying. So if you just keep doing all these one-liners, like it's really hard when you start doing longer sets to make it flow yeah. together because you got to remember everything and mm. and you can't you don't want to open up on a cum joke and then do a fucking family-friendly joke mm -hmm. halfway through your you set. You got to open up with a 9/11 joke, then do family-friendly. Yeah, but I don't know. You know, everyone's style's different. You got to mm -hmm. be able to command the room, um, and then you got to have practice too. Like I don't, I don't even. That's why I don't like doing a lot of open mics because I don't find it helps me prepare for what I'm trying to do. It's not productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like people that just do open mics that are at places where people don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. and they're so used to like there being noise and people talking that like when they're in a club, the silence is fucking... She supposed to make the silence make the people in the crowd uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But it makes you uncomfortable. So yeah. They're paying yeah. attention like, oh shit. Yeah, like you'll know, like they run up and grab the mic and they're like... Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, I'll just... They're there, you know. So mm -hmm. I think you'll see, you'll see that. So um, it's, I've, it's, I've heard that from a lot of comics, though. It's just like when you go to like, like a, they do theater shows or they do like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like being comfortable in the silence. Yeah. Because the silence is really quiet. Yeah. You know, the pops are great, but it's just like when it stops, it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. Now, now I gotta keep going. 
I was like, I find that in Phoenix. Like, if even the Phoenix open mics, it's like, this, these crowds are kind of listening at a lot of these places. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. Well, if you're going to try and do well at, like, an open mic or a bar show, you got to mm-hmm. find the people that are actually paying attention and start with them. Yeah. Like, that. I've done a show where I killed in front of, it was all comedians and, like, two people mm-hmm. in the front row, and that was it. Yeah. But you still couldn't hear any laughs. Yeah. But, like, the dude gave me money afterwards. Mm-hmm. I was like... It's oddly satisfying. Yeah, I mean, it's a pet peeve of mine when there's hella audience or hella comics in the crowd, and the comics are just talking to the comics. Like, there's audience members here. Talk to those too. Yeah, and you'll see a lot of that um, where they'll laugh at their friends, but that's not helping you get better hmm. because, like, they're just laughing. They're just high fiving themselves. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't want to do stuff in front of comedians. I'll do that before I do the joke. Mm-hmm. But even then, you know, like I've ran stuff by you and you're like, I don't know about that. And I went up and just murdered with it. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's only one way to find out. There is. It's the goddamn stage. Pretty much, dude. And uh, I, I find that a paying audience is like a movie theater where you got to, I talk about this all the time, you got to, if you go to movies and you pay money, usually everyone's supposed to shut the fuck up. Yeah. And people will get annoyed with someone who's not shutting the fuck up mm-hmm. versus the opposite. So, I don't know, you practice how you play. Yeah. But I think there's, the downside to, like, it's disappointing for me is I don't get on stage nearly as much as I used to when mm. I started. So I feel like when I get booked somewhere, the first show I'll do for a weekend is, like, not as sharp. Mm. And then afterwards, like, I fucked up at laughs uh, mm. a couple weekends ago, uh, doing fine the whole set, and then got into the closer, the, the, the 9-11 bit. And there's a callback in there, and I realized halfway through the joke that I didn't mention part that's like the closing mm. part and I was like fuck mm-hmm. so ran through the joke anyways did the punchline dude and that play is really easy to get last it was crickets mm-hmm. I was like fuck fuck Damn. and the light was blinking and shit and I, was like, Time. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean that's kind of my philosophy I just like being on stage as much as possible even yeah, if yeah. I'm doing it to an empty room maybe I'll just have a little manic yeah. episode to be fun yes. or maybe I'll just talk to somebody I don't know I'll just do something yeah yeah so if your intention is set for that then you just got to know that that's what you're doing. People are so obsessed with like, how do I do? How do I do? It's like, well, just look at look at it in perspective. What what mm-hmm. what are you trying to get out of this? Because mm-hmm. if you go do like jokes that could be really good, no one's laughing. Like you might think they suck, but that's mm-hmm. not the case. Yeah. Um, that uh, yeah, that bad open mic will just make you feel bad about your jokes sometimes. Yeah, or good. Or they'll crush somewhere like a club, and they'll be like I have to get to this open mic to uh, to humble myself. Blah blah. It's like I don't. You don't have to. Uh, I do. Yeah. I well, didn't kill Tony. I went straight to the worst open mic right after. I was like, Creaking <laughs> creak Cave? I went to the Creak in the Cave. Oh, dude, that one's fucking ass. I didn't even get up. I was on the third page of the list, but I was there. I had the full intention of doing terrible. Did you go to the mic that they do on Sundays at Creek? Yeah, we went to every mic we could. The, the Heckle mic? Yeah. That's my Oh, favorite. we didn't get up. We really, the Banana Phone? That's, I really wanted to do that's my favorite. Phone. That's my favorite mic I've ever been to. That was so good. Did you get up there? No. Dude, uh, Autumn pushed. He, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he pushed for me to get up there. There's another dude that used to live in Phoenix, mm. lives in Vegas, but he was there too, and he he got up there and crushed mm. uh, Ray Earl. And then uh, I get like they're like, all right, this is the last person, and I was like, well, I'm not going up, so yeah, I damn. left. And I guess they call my name after. Damn. And I was like, well, why did you say that was the last one? And like, mm. I would have would definitely done it. You would have did great too, because a lot of people were getting up there and just being like crucified. They were just standing there with oh, the dude. mic, just being. I saw some dude get roasted. Like, they didn't stop. It was 10 minutes straight, dude. And he just sat there on the stool like... I hate that. Say something. Fight back. He Fight couldn't. He couldn't, up. bro. It's, no. He couldn't because you can't get your spot, bro. Everybody had something. Just bing, 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 bing. <laughs> it was just like, he couldn't, dude. They, Because he looked like a Nickelback band member. Uh, and they just kept singing, like, that genre of music as, like, changing the lyrics to being a pedophile. <laughs> oh, my God. And the dude was just, he couldn't fucking... So what's the setup for this mic? Like, what is, for people that like, don't know. They set it up kind of like Killzone. You go uh-huh. up, there's, there's like, a panel of people, um, and they, like, they're local comedians, and they have a microphone, and uh-huh. then there's, you go up and you do a minute uninterrupted, and then afterwards they can start roasting you, and, and you can heckle from the audience. The audience is oh, heckling. And so it's, it's, the audience yeah. has hella comics in it, too, so it's not... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah dude. They, they're pretty clever. Like, <laughs> it's all, yeah, they're, they're, they're clever not bunch. idiots. It's, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm great at heckling when, uh, when it's just me heckling. Uh-huh. Right? Like, it's hard to even get your thing in because someone's always... Yeah. And if you say something that's dog shit, they'll boo you. Yeah. Like, I was trying up. to heckle. I was sitting there like, when do I? It was oh, like yeah, jump dude. rope. Yeah. 
because you got to pick your spots. Uh, That's another s- weird skill that you probably don't need to develop. The heck <laughs> skill? <laughs> yeah, you don't. Like. Unless it's for that specific <laughs> occasion, which is like it's only that. Killing from a, as a heckler is pretty funny, though. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Sometimes heck, hecklers cook sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The others, I mean, there's always, it's always tough getting started in comedy because you're learning shit, but there's some people that do it for a long time and still fucking suck. And like, they get up there and they just get their shit tossed to. <laughs> so funny. Like, maybe you should look at doing something else. I don't well, know. How do you feel when you meet the 10 year comics that you feel are not very good at all? Man, I stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad juju. Yeah, dude. I, if, yeah. It's not in a, not in a, uh, disrespectful way just like mm. uh, I don't know I just have a, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of like staying away from the people that I, aren't gonna be a benefit to me mm-hmm. not in a way that I'm gonna use them but in a way that's like there's no value here mm-hmm. you're just trying to suck up my time mm-hmm. with some shit and I fucking hate talking about comedy at open mics mm-hmm. like this is what I have had dudes just coked out like yeah, dude, I, I need to start doing this and this and this. Mm. I mean, what do you think? I was like, sounds like you got all the answers, bro. Yeah, you figured it out. <laughs> Maybe you should go do it. Then. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't know. It's fucking, it's a lot of that. I don't know. I, It's more, I guess, uh, uneasy feeling for me to do an open mic like that than it would be to do like a club. Mm-hmm. But they like the opposite. Like, and It's weird because it's still public speaking, which is a huge fear of a ton of people. And so you got all these fucking introverted fucking weirdos Mm -hmm. that think it's a good idea to get a microphone Mm -hmm. in their hand and start doing shit. Mm. I don't know why they do it. I love open mics. Do you? I love watching psychos up there just having breakdowns. Oh, yeah. I enjoy it a lot. I like like going to open mics. Yeah, they're so funny to me. Yeah, they're 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 great. There's a comedian here that the only time he's funny is when he, like, gets mad. Uh Uh-huh. And so, like, whenever I'm at a mic with him, I'll sit in the back and heckle him. Uh-huh. And he starts, he's like, who, who said that? Who said that? Shut the fuck up. And then he starts crushing. <laughs> starts killing. Well, Absolutely I'm killing. I'm like, maybe like, he just needs you with him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, yeah. But he doesn't like that about himself, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the other thing. Fucking. He's like, I don't, I, that's not me. I don't want to do that. I'm like, he's like, Jekyll and Hyde. Thing. Yeah. You like, should make him your opener and just be a monster to him. That's another thing, uh, open micers, maybe that separates them is like, some of them are really funny. They just don't know why they're funny. Hmm. They want you to laugh at the things they want you to laugh at, but they don't know why people are laughing at them. Hmm. There's no self awareness. Self awareness, I think, is what all great comedians across the board have. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Like, you're able to see reality and fucking make mm-hmm. it relatable, fucking know yourself, yeah. talk about your flaws. It's like, kind of a it's a philosophy type of thing too that's what i mean i think the traveling thing we've been doing is helping me understand like you learn what you look like you oh yeah well you've been in it learn how you fit into all these different scenes you guys have been in it long enough now like yeah there's a there's a business side to it like learning the skill of like how to get booked while you're on the road is a mm-hmm. really important skill learning how to keep your schedule full is super important mm-hmm. like and it's a whole other job like branding yourself making sure you're staying booked talking with people it's like that's why people have managers and agents at a mm-hmm. certain point but comedy is like probably the least paying art like if you want to make money in the arts comedy is probably not no you don't get you not none of us get in this for the money yeah, we each got paid 20 dollars for a show we spent all of our money at waffle house here today <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah it goes quick man yeah. that sucked <laughs> we hit so i out. slapped that 20 dollar bill down i did 15 minutes for that we usually hit in and out afterwards yeah i lost everything <laughs> <laughs> from the whole tour. Yeah, the tour. Yeah, the tour. We had three shows. Do you follow that one guy's page that uh, just does like open mic memes? Uh, oh, yes. Kurt. Kurt, Kurt, yeah. Kurt Ryan Comedy. Yeah, he's great. Dude. He's a genius. Uh, it's like, uh-huh. man, it's it's such a it's such a niche, though, that not people aren't going to get it. But, uh-uh. but I find with other scenes, it's similar, like, uh, like DJing. DJs are similar. Musicians, too. Um, a similar kind of thing like the the things that go on mm-hmm. amongst it and it's so funny dude like mom dad can you give me a ride to op- to the open mic i have a new joke about cum <laughs> gotta get this butt eating joke out this ass eating joke right they need it <laughs> yeah he's he asked me said one of the funniest things when adam dominguez was on the podcast mm-hmm. oh yeah was, adam was like uh if you had like a bitches be like but would comics be like as was like comics be like i'm important yeah and it was I've seen that clip. That's my favorite clip you've ever produced. Really? That's a good clip. Yeah. Like, That's a good ad. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't hit me till like later. Yeah, help, I didn't even help. catch it. Like, Adam lost it. Uh-huh. He's like, you've been around comedians enough. He's like, what, what is your, what are, if you had to say comedians as a generality, uh-huh. I was like, well, comedians would be like, I'm important. 
And then Adam like tried to gloss over it, but Adam was losing it. Oh, that was some good shit. Yeah. That was genius. That's my favorite <laughs> clip. It's a good ass clip. Yeah, because I cause, cause I don't do comedy. I mean I've done open mics before and shit like that, but I don't like actually do comedy. But I uh-huh. I'm, I've been a videographer for com- comedians like a lot. It's cool. Yeah. So like I've I've I know comedy. Um, so ha- but, have you watched this show Baby Reindeer? Yeah. Dude. So good. Yeah, it was. I it was fucked up. Binged it the whole th- Yeah, I dude. couldn't even have sex after that show. I would watch that show, and I was like, I'm not fucking today. I put my wine. I was drinking wine. My stomach started to hurt. I was like, it was probably drugged or something. The show know? is, I mean, it's, that's like, it, it's good for, it's good for, it's a good show for anybody, but it's like, it's, uh, especially as a comedian, like, you're like, man, you relate to a lot of the stuff in there, and then uh, it's, it makes you mad. It makes you, like, relieved at times. It makes mm-hmm. you hate some people. Makes you love the tr- the one person you love is the trans person. Uh, it's fucking great. It was good. It's so good. Did you see the lady that was the stalker do Piers Morgan? Mm-mm. She did Piers Morgan, the, like okay. the stalker from the show, the real okay. stalker. Yeah, it's something to watch. It's just oh, crazy. oh, the real life stalker. The real life stalker did Piers oh, Morgan. Yeah, and like talked about how it was all bullshit or whatever. You could see how crazy she is when she talks about it. Just delusional. Yeah, it's scary. Like, That's, have you? Uh, it's scary. Like, have you tried to open mic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, the idea of having an audience member follow you to every open mic, like, okay, it's not the worst. Right. She uh, loves this. I think it also shows too, like, um, you know, that people have shit that they're going through and you're like why is this guy fucking like this mm-hmm. like man you have there no, was a reason yeah you have no clue man yeah mm-hmm. so like always remembering to keep that because we don't always do that we just mm-hmm. we, we're all judgy but like remembering that like man you don't know now i'm like man he definitely got touched yeah you know like you can tell <laughs> this guy's having a breakdown it's a little funny but no oh, no yeah dude like, yeah mm, yeah fuck comedy <laughs> for real, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The open mic thing is a completely different set of comedy. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to distance yourself. And it's it's important, and I think crucial to your development to start that way, especially if you don't have public speaking skills. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, but you want to move away from that. I feel like I'm point. in the phase. I'm flickering out of it. Like I'm like bashing my head against the open mic ceiling, and mm-hmm. I'm getting out every now and then. Well, you, you get. Um, I, be- I truly believe that you are who you surround yourself with. So, mm-hmm. like, if you're spending time at those environments all the time, you're mm-hmm. not. At a certain point, man, you have to. Mm-hmm. You have to break free from that because it's. Uh, God, there's so, dude. I can't even go to uh, most open mics without drinking. Oh yeah, I can't do it yeah. sober, dude. Like it, no g- it gives me a physical headache. Yeah, you, know? you have to drink. Yeah, we were talking about that. We we're like, I, I can't even watch. It's hard for me to watch good comedy sometimes, mm-hmm. but just to see bad comedies it's for like, three holy, hours. Holy sometimes. shit! It's like, give me a drink. I'm buying a bottle. <laughs> it's gonna be in my trunk. It's gonna be in my car, and, and I'm gonna I'll take be, a lot of breaks. I'm gonna take laps. <laughs> And I will get through this open mic. You're going to see a different person every time I walk back into this I'm bar. I'm excited now. <laughs> this part is killing. That was a killing. Part of my recovery and <gasps> sobriety is stop going to open mics. Yeah, that'll help. Yeah. Fucking, it's a necessary evil. Yeah, no, I have a fear. Like, a, so many people get stuck in the open mic phase. It is hard to get out. Like, it's like this bog that you just get stuck knee deep, deep in. It's just, you know, you got to get out. Yeah, yeah. I don't ever remember having much fun. Yeah. Any of those. When I was in Portland, I wasn't drinking when I was doing comedy, and mm-hmm. I didn't talk to anybody. I, mm-hmm. said I talked to you guys, but that was about it. Mm-hmm. You guys and uh, Imani, that mm-hmm. was it. Other than that, I didn't talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I get a feeling these people don't like me. <laughs> just because well, just of how I look. Maybe that's mm-hmm. me being you know, sensitive, but I kind of felt that way. <laughs> they do hate some people. I try to like everybody. I try to be nice to everybody and just do these goddamn open mics. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to do everything. I just want to do everything. I'm do every show. Right. I want you to not like me because of something else other than what I look like. Yeah. You know. Wow. That's not fair. Yeah. You really understand black people, don't you? Mm. <laughs> you have a deep empathy. Yeah. That's beautiful, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> ally of all. Yeah, he is an ally. <laughs> so where else are you, uh, where are you guys traveling to? We're on our way. We're going to do two open mics after this, and then i got a show at the Laugh Factory tomorrow in L.A. How'd you get on that? Uh, I ran my open mic in an L.A. comic. I just bump. Mm. I, every time visiting comics go to my open mic, I just bump them up to the top. Yeah. And then it just pays off later. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, that's a big benefit of, of producing. I've never mm. produced a show, but hosting a show or a mic mm. is always like you see producers book each other all the time. Mm. I'm not necessarily a fan of that because a lot of times not out of talent or anything. Yeah. It's just like, but it is, it is a big benefit. It is. I was like, it was like months ago. And I was like, cause I have a, my open mic's pretty popping. I probably have the that looks one. Like, yeah. It's fun. We get an audience. It's not like, 
Like, I work hard to promote it and make it feel like a show. And I run it like a show. I host it. Like, yeah. I hate a sad open mic host. Yeah, yeah. Like, I try. I'll do this, like, three hours long, and I maintain the energy the whole time. Good. Yeah. And I do that, and I, like, so I, if visiting comics come up, you're getting bumped up. Yeah. And, yeah, he did it when he saw I was going to L.A., hit me up, put me on it. That's good, dude. Um, and then Juan's got a show in Sacramento the day after that, and then we're going to Eureka. We have, like, a run of shows to finish it I out. Saw, yeah, I saw you. So, just California's left? Yeah. Run away, make a run through California, and then we're home. He's doing that show with Eric, my roommate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah pretty excited. Dope. Spanglish, Spanglish. Yeah, yeah. Dope. Are you the one white guy on there? Yeah, there he is. At first, I was like, oh shit, do they think I'm Mexican? Oh dude, I'm tan. tan. It's great being like the one white it's guy. The facial yeah. hair. It is. It is. I started you're, going you're through the posters. The... I was looking for white guys on all the posters. Like, <laughs> I have to swear to God. It, um, you don't have to bring people either. I brought these two. Okay, yeah. There you go. I got three people coming. That's a benefit. Check. Yeah. I've done that one. I've because that's a super LA thing. Is mm-hmm. uh, you, most shows, especially the clubs, you got to bring people. That was the first thing I was. You asked me, do you bring anybody? That yeah. always, always, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like when I've made trips down there, mm-hmm. brought other comedians. Like, got it my, works. That's got, not even. Got my three. Yeah, I did get my three. They're all comics, but yeah. they're great. <laughs> They'll laugh. Yeah, LA's. Fuck, I hate LA so much. Mm. So. It's just the same reason I don't like a Portland or an Austin, uh-huh. just because it's dirty. Yeah. And it's uh, it's very... I, Portland is not necessarily like... Uh, what well, is because if you look at it from the economical standpoint, there's one comedy club. Uh-huh. And then how much how much stage time can you get in that city yeah, at the club as a local? You're not getting any almost. You're not getting booked, bro. No. 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 That's why no. I, I even put my open mic on the same day as the Helium open mic because it's like, I'm not going to bake them. So in a sense, it's kind of like that in those cities where it's like, yeah, you're not you're not getting on. Yeah. There's a process that you can get through, though. Like, you can go to the Laugh Factory. I've done it a couple of times where you stand in line and you can get on their open mic and you do two minutes of G-rated huh. material. That's funny. And the one person that they choose gets to move on to the next round of like auditions huh. and you're gonna do six minutes and if you pass that then uh, you can be a regular mm-hmm. so I mean at least that's a fair mm-hmm. way to do it might not they might already know who they're picking mm-hmm. maybe but at least you get that chance it was funny because uh, you don't understand how hard it is to do clean comedy if you've never I started doing comedy like writing clean even if they're fucked up jokes yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always there's no cuss words or anything no. but it is hard though you get paid more yeah and uh have you done any corporate shows? No, I've done church shows though. You got a church show. Mm-hmm. Wow. Those paid. I didn't even think you were able to walk in those. <laughs> Thought he burst into flame. Yeah, yeah. I implied it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a Bible verse on my shirt. Uh, wasn't Jesus was like a gangster though? Yeah, he was. So he I had mean, a gang of disciples. Yeah, dude. You know, don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, um, but. Uh, yeah, I've done some church shows uh-huh. a couple times. You went to them. You went yeah. to one that one time. That was dope. It was interesting. Yeah, there's no alcohol. There's like there's really little, there's interesting little kids looking people. running around. Yeah. It's like, funny. But damn, they pay better than most clubs. Of course they do. Yeah. yeah the club fate, I see the clubs coming. I think I want to do a run of just, I want to do bars and little venues all across America for like a year and just like literally build a little fan base out of these rowdy rooms, shake hands and just yeah. learn to kill. Killing in silence, killing when no one watches. You know, I think that's cool. And then by the time I get to these clubs, I'm amazing. That's what I want. Like I want to kill in these little places. Yeah. You want to kill. Think, uh Ty Rivera talked about doing that. Mm-hmm. He, he used to do shit like that. Just go into these little bars and he cuz you could say whatever. Yeah. And I want to book my own. I think we're I want to be like my own manager for a little bit, call mm-hmm. these places and like convince them like me and my friends are coming through. We can put on a one night show mm-hmm. in your little like five thousand people town. Yeah, people I think that's, come out. I think that's one of the biggest things I learned from uh, comedy was uh, as far as like producing shows and stuff like that. The uh-huh. producer gets paid the money. Yeah, you just bring the people. Yeah, and like you just say, oh, I'm running an open mic or I'm running a show like this. It's like you get to do the money. Everybody else there is just for stage time. Yeah, and it's just like you can make a lot of money like that. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think me and my buddies can do that. Hell yeah. There's these little towns like Beaver, yeah, Colorado. There's nothing, like, nothing else going on. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of why uh, Laughs in Tucson does uh-huh. so well. It's just like, because there's nothing else. Yeah, need yeah. some comedy. Yeah, little towns are a niche. Even in uh, Oregon, like once you get out of the metro area, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's a lot of, there's a lot like a... Redmond, Bend. Yeah, yeah, even, I'm doing a show in Eugene uh-huh. in July. That's dope. But that's like a smaller Portland. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, then, but yeah, there's like the, the countryside too. Redmond and Bend are kind of like, I guess Redmond's a little more, but Bend is like another Portland mm-hmm. as well. 
Redmond is not. No. No. <laughs> no. Hell no. And then like Madras, if you want to get out to the Yeah, you start seeing cowboy hats. It gets, mm-hmm. It's different. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like what maybe somebody that doesn't live in the West Coast or has been there would think of Oregon as. Uh-huh. It's like you'd think of Arizona as like, like Tucson's really the more real Arizona. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, yeah, I've done some shows in some small towns here too. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah, there's nothing else to do, so they pack out. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it's weird. I've never lived in a small town like Imagine living three hours from an airport. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> Never want to do that. Did you guys drive from Portland or did you fly here and get we, a rental? We drove from Portland. Really? We drove all the way down to California, through Arizona, through New Mexico, to Texas. You should try the American uh, experience. It was. So, yeah, I was going to say, uh, another good one to try if you can get on, if you go back through Salt Lake, is the Wise Guys comedy. You just got to mm-hmm. email them, tell them you're a traveling comedian, and uh, you're passing through. We'll hit them up. I, we want to do a second loop going through, like, the, you know, the mountainous whites up here. That's what I, when I moved here, uh, I did, I my halfway point was Salt Lake City, mm-hmm. and I emailed them and uh, got on there. That's a great club, Salt Lake. The Wise Guys, mm. the phenomenal club. The one in Vegas is cool, too, but the one in Salt Lake is dope. Yeah, and no, I want to spend a lot of time in Vegas, too. I like the clubs. Have you done shows where the club has an actual clock instead of just the light? Yeah, we've seen a couple clubs. Savage Henry and Eureka has that. There's another place. Mothership has it. Yeah. yeah it's I, really that's, cool. That's nice to have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Couple open mics for the boys, Gatsby. Where are we at on time? Uh, it's we're at we're close to an hour. You guys got somewhere to be at like seven or something? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's six oh nine, so I don't know. Yeah, that'd be time for us to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, dude. Appreciate it's good to stopping, see you. Stopping yeah. by, catching you on this leg of the tour. Yeah, no, we're glad to do it. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, we'll uh, I'll make sure I put all your stuff in the show notes, and we'll have clips and stuff. So yeah, man, come out. That's it. That's it. We're done. conclusion. <laughs> Here we go. So people know what's happening. Thank you. Uh, no, I got this. <laughs>